wanted to discuss the shoulder, specifically the rotator cuff, and talk about the anatomy and the sort of problems we see with the rotator cuff and what sorts of things we can do for treatment as well as even surgery for the shoulder and the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff is a series of four muscles that surrounds the humeral head or the ball and helps hold it into the socket. And the shoulder blade is a pretty thin bone and there's four muscles that come off of the shoulder blade and these muscles then all end in a single tendon and this tendon wraps around the ball and that, that tendon as it all comes together from the four different muscles, that's what the rotator cuff is. And so there's really four different parts of the rotator cuff, but we describe it as one single entity. The biceps tendon comes through this groove and comes right in and attaches to this spot on the shoulder. And so the biceps itself actually splits part of the rotator cuff. And if a surgeon is looking inside the joint, we can see the biceps tendon inside the joint as well. So uh, the, the shoulder socket itself is pretty shallow. And this model really doesn't show it very well, but there's a lip or a rim of tissue around the whole thing called the labrum. And you may have heard about the labrum. It's kind of like a meniscus in the knee. And as I said, the biceps attaches up here. Another area in the shoulder that's often painful is where the collarbone comes in right here, or the AC joint, acromial clavicular joint. And a lot of us get a little bit of arthritis or wear and tear, even as early as in our 30s, uh, from activities where we wear this little knuckle joint out. And we can get arthritis here that's often painful. And that that usually or often will occur with some rotator cuff problems. So we see the two of those things kind of coming together pretty often. The shoulder can get irritated. The rotator cuff specifically can get irritated. We think when the bone right here rubs on the bone above, that's called the acromion. And we believe that there's a time when some people's shoulders aren't as strong as they should be and the ball starts to move around a bit. And as it moves around, the space gets closed and the rotator cuff gets irritated. And that's where we get a tendonitis from. Sometimes the body tries to heal that tendonitis and there's calcium that is deposited right in the rotator cuff. And that's why we see that on the x-ray. And that's called a calcific tendonitis. And I found that when the calcium gets deposited, it's a lot harder to get that to go away than when the calcium is not there. If the rotator cuff isn't torn up and it's just irritated, sometimes therapy can be done to strengthen the shoulder, pull that ball back down, loosen the shoulder up, and it moves better and the irritation will go away. An injection of cortisone can be used in this area to take away the inflammation and that can sometimes help with the tendonitis as well. We think there's a progress that can occur sometimes where there's a progression from irritation until that bone actually starts to wear things out and the rotator cuff will start to tear and the rotator cuff will tear partly usually to begin with and then eventually it can become a full tear. And that's something that we think occurs over time. Although some people have an experience where they may fall or lift something heavy, they feel something tear in their shoulder and especially if they notice they can't move their shoulder, that's when what we call an acute tear occurs. And that can be a full tear where the tendon is pulled fully off of the bone. When things like therapy or cortisone injections or even waiting for a little bit of time to pass don't help, then it's often it's time to consider surgery. And it depends exactly what the condition is of the rotator cuff to decide what we're going to need to do for surgery. I'm not going to talk about it much right now, but if someone has a huge tear and it's not fixable and the shoulder doesn't work barely at all, then it's sometimes it's time to even replace the shoulder with what we call a reverse replacement. And that's a replacement where somebody has their ball and socket replaced and their rotator cuff isn't needed anymore. But that's not usually used for rotator cuff problems. Most rotator cuff problems are things we can solve without something so drastic. If a patient has had a rotator cuff problem for a real long time and it hasn't gotten better with things like injection or therapy, then surgery is often the next course for us. If there's a calcium deposit in the rotator cuff, that can be cleaned out. If the rotator cuff isn't torn and the bone's just irritating it, that bone can be shaved down. That's called an acromioplasty or a decompression. As I mentioned earlier, sometimes people have pain where the collarbone comes in and that collarbone can be shaved out. That's from arthritis, the pain right here at the collarbone. And this is one spot of the body we can remove arthritis and it won't come back because we, we remove the tip of the collarbone. If the damage is bad enough to the rotator cuff where it's partly torn, that can be cleaned up. And if the tear is less than half 
of the thickness of the rotator cuff, cleaning it up allows somebody to do quite well. When the tear is more than half the thickness of, of the rotator cuff, or if a tear is complete and the rotator cuff is completely torn off the bone, that's when we need to sew that rotator cuff back down to the bone. And that can be done different ways, but somehow the tendon has to be brought back to this area and the tendon has to be sewn to the bone, either with little anchors, which can be made out of metal or plastic, or some holes can be drilled in the bone, which is typically what I'll do to create a, a solid repair zone to sew the tendons back down to the bone. If somebody has surgery just to clean up their shoulder to maybe take out the tip of the collarbone, remove some bone here, that decompression, or, and even if the rotator cuff is cleaned up, as long as nothing's repaired, they're usually allowed to start moving that shoulder right away. And I'll usually start therapy on that patient's shoulder within a week or two from surgery. And hopefully by a, a month or two, people are mostly recovered, and by three months, there's a full recovery of that shoulder. There's really no restrictions I put on the patient other than to keep things comfortable and allow things to kind of occur as as comfort dictates. And uh, usually by four weeks people are doing pretty well and there's a progression to three to four months for full recovery. With a rotator cuff repair I usually tell patients that there's a progression that's pretty expected. You may have heard if you've spoken to somebody else who's had the surgery that it's a long recovery and to some extent it is. What I expect for patients is that by three months after their surgery they're about 80 percent improved and at six months they're about 90% improved and it takes a full year for complete recovery. I do expect most people with a rotator cuff repair to get essentially all their motion back and all their strength back and feel like they have a normal shoulder. But that point where they really feel like their shoulder is completely normal is about a year out. What happens after a rotator cuff repair as far as a rehabilitation goes is that for the first six weeks uh, you're told not to move your arm away from your body. When the rotator cuff is sewn back down to the bone, it's held in place and needs to heal. And if you use your shoulder too much, you can pull on those sutures and maybe either slow down healing or maybe even alter it or change it or undo the repair. It's not like the repair is so weak that a little motion is bad. And actually, I do allow patients some motion. But it's just that overall overuse could cause the repair to not heal the way we want it to. And so for the first six weeks, I want people to have their elbow at their side and not to move the elbow away from the body. So if the elbow is moved away from the body, either forward or backwards or to the side, that has to be done by something besides the patient's own muscle power. Either leaning forward and letting gravity do it with a pendulum exercise, or having the CPM machine, which I'll describe in a second, do it, or maybe even having somebody prop the arm on something to support it and keep it away from the body. So it's not the position that's the problem, it's the act of actively moving the shoulder that's the problem. One of the potential complications from a rotator cuff repair is stiffness and to help prevent that and also to stimulate a little bit of healing in a good way is to have a CPM or continuous passive motion machine. This is a machine that will be delivered to your house and it has an arm, almost like a robot arm attached to it and you put your arm in that and it moves your arm for you. And that helps get the arm moving and we'll use that from after surgery, usually within one to three days after surgery. We'll use that for six weeks. So for six weeks, the patient uses this passive motion machine. And when the people come out to the house to demonstrate the machine to you, usually it's before surgery, so you're comfortable. You can see how it works. They'll show you how to turn it up. In most cases, with a regular rotator cuff repair, I'll have the patient turn this machine up as they can tolerate it, getting it towards more normal motion over that six-week period. And my overall rule is that you move the mach machine up in motion as much as you can tolerate it uh, throughout the, the days that after surgery. There's a few cases, and I'll tell you and I'll explain to you, there's a few cases where somebody's tear is so big, I don't have the patient turn the machine up, but that's not typical. So for that first zero to six week period, the arm's at the side, you're allowed to move it side to side, but not to reach forward, not to reach away. Side to side motion's okay, so people can even drive after a few weeks, keyboard, do simple things. If you wanna eat or reach your mouth, you'll do that with your elbow at your side. After six weeks, I allow patients to move their arm away from their body as they wish. You'll be a little snug, a little tight, you'll be weak, that's expected. At that six week point, then we start physical therapy and the therapist starts to stretch the shoulder out. About two weeks later, so at eight weeks or two months after surgery, you'll start to strengthen the shoulder. And again, at about three months after surgery, you hit that 80% point. It's four months before I want somebody to do something real stressful to the shoulder. So if you have a job or an activity that's real stressful, it's probably four months before you're back doing that. 
things like push-ups or weight training, uh, body weight exercises, lifting heavy weights at work, those are all about four months after the surgery. Fortunately, most surgery on the shoulder is extremely successful, but there's always some risks associated with any surgery. There's a risk of infection with any surgery, probably a little bit more of the rotator cuff repair than just a clean-out procedure of the shoulder, but it's still less than 1% of the time. If somebody does have an infection after a rotator cuff repair, it does mean a trip back to the, the operating room for a washout and probably some antibiotics through an IV for well, up, to, up to a month or more. One of the things we do to prevent infection, we have you scrub up with soap in and around your shoulder and your armpit before the surgery. I'll seal the, seal the surgical wound if it's a rotator cuff repair with a glue and put a plastic dressing on that stays on for two weeks to prevent bacteria from getting into the incision. Since I've started doing that, I've had no infections after a rotator cuff repair, so I think it's a pretty successful way to treat it. Stiffness, stiffness is a concern after a shoulder surgery. Very uncommon unless the rotator cuff is fixed, and even with a rotator cuff repair, it's still less than 1% of the time. But if someone's shoulder doesn't get moving with the, with the CPM or the continuous passive motion chair and with therapy, sometimes at three months or four months, we'll go back to the operating room and stretch the shoulder out. Again, that's less than 1% of the time. Things like smoking, things like diabetes, poor health can lead to an increased risk of that tendon not healing down to the bone if it's a rotator cuff repair. Persistent tears or re-tears are things that can happen. It's dependent on the patient's health, dependent on things the patient does like smoking. It's dependent on how compliant you are. If you're moving the shoulder a lot before you're supposed to, that may pull things apart and things may not heal. A fall may precipitate a failure. So there are some things in your control and some things out of your control. But if you follow the course and the tear is not too big, there's well into the 90th percentile of having excellent results and full healing. If it's a real big tear, it's possible that no matter what we do, it won't heal all the way. The good news is, surprisingly, even when things don't heal all the way with the real big tears, typically the pain's better after surgery, even if the tear doesn't heal all the way. <music>